Hello, how y'all doing? Welcome to How to Manage Your Monkey, Mania Devil Productions. I'm your host, David E. McClendon Sr. We'll get into our video in just a second, but first a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the many blessings you bestowed upon us. Thank you for our YouTube watchers, all of our blog followers, all of our blog readers, all the publishers, publicists, authors, illustrators, merchandisers, manufacturer representatives, and others that we come in contact with via these blogs and these YouTube channels. If there's anyone out there seeking to find you, please help them to find you. It's in Jesus Christ, Yeshua's most holy and most precious name that we pray by the power of his blood. Amen. Project Unthinkable, a doctor's gamble to save millions of lives. I've got to tell you that other than the Bible, this is probably the most hopeful book I've ever read. And the reason I say that... My wife is dying of COPD because of secondhand smoke. Uh, she's never smoked a day in her life and she's got COPD. Her mother has emphysema and COPD. Again, because of secondhand smoke, she never smoked a day in her life. So it's helpful to believe that because of this doctor who has worked with the WHO, who has worked with other organizations to help reduce smoking, uh, that we're going to probably see the end of your conventional kind of cigarette probably in the near future. And the reason I say that is because now one of the world's largest cigarette manufacturers has decided to eliminate, to gradually eradicate regular conventional light em up kind of cigarettes. And hopefully, hopefully, that will end cigarette smoking. Now, that doesn't mean that other cigarette companies will come out and say, hey, um, they're out of the picture, so let's step up the game. Well, if that happens, there's not really a whole lot we can do. Because the um, government has tried, and I don't really know about wholeheartedly, they've tried to eradicate smoking by raising the taxes on cigarettes and raising the smoking ages and all of that. But the problem with that is that smokers don't care. I've worked in convenience stores and told people, well, you know, the beginning of the year they're going to raise the tax on cigarettes by about a dollar a pack. And every time, absolutely every time, most of the people I tell this to say, well, when it goes up, I'm going to quit. And not one of them ever did. Some of them switched to cheaper brands of smoking, but none. And I can unequivocally say none of these people that I talk to, because I know them personally, none of these people talk to even slowed down on their smoking. Some of them switched to cheaper brands, but that was it. By banning it in some places, like on healthcare campuses and college campuses and that sort of thing, it just gets ignored. You know, the uh, people that are in charge with enforcing it, ignore it. And until you have some really strict penalties for smoking in public places, for smoking in restaurants, for smoking on college campuses for smoking uh, in or near a health campus, for smoking in or near a retail store, there's going to be no sting to it. There are all kind of municipal codes against it, but nobody ever enforces it because most of the people that are in charge with enforcing it either don't care or are smokers themselves. So the only real way to attack this is the way that uh, this second largest cigarette manufacturer in the world is approaching it. And I got to say, here with Philip Morris, Philip Morris International, they are approaching it wisely. They've got all kind of research. And the problem is that people are accusing this doctor, um, Dr. Derek, I'm going to say yak, but I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I apologize. They've approached people like him and hired him, and then people are accusing him of being a sellout. But it's not a sellout if ultimately... Ultimately, you're helping people to stop smoking. It's not a sellout if ultimately you are helping people to get healthy. Now, I wholeheartedly recommend this book. I think if you have a smoker in your life, you need to read this book. If you are like me and just absolutely hate having to breathe in other people's smoke, you need to read this book because it is hopeful. It is helpful. We think it's very well written. It's very interesting. It's very ent entertaining. Uh, even if you're a smoker and you don't plan on stopping smoking, you'll want to read this book because it is very enlightening. It is very uh, interesting and it is very thought-provoking. It may help you to have some discussions around the dinner table. Thank you very much for listening. 
Let us know what you think. Drop us a comment in the comment box below or send us an email over at videos at gmail.com. And we thank you. Wow, Guinea, are they really going to stop people from smoking? I don't know. I think it's still a long battle ahead of everybody. Oh, but it'd be good if people would stop smoking because little kids like me shouldn't be breathing in that kind of stuff. And I know people that smoke with the windows closed and the kids in the car. And that's terrible. Yeah, it is terrible. I know people that smoke in their house with the windows shut and the kids in the house. And that's terrible too. Yes, it is, Hammy. I think that people should never, ever smoke in an enclosed environment with their kids around. Oh, well, Gibby, people, drop us a note and let us know what you think. Thank you. Bye. Ready to order? Click the link below.